Hi there, thanks and welcome to the first in a series of foot and ankle videos. So a lot of us during lockdown have been doing uh, extra walking, which is great, but it's led to a few people getting a few more niggles with their feet or their ankles or into their knees or their calves. So what this video and series of videos will help you with is uh, strengthening them up, some good flexibility exercises and a few general tips and pointers that you can hopefully take away with you. So one of the things to think about is when you're doing a lot of walking, although it may be, may be an obvious thing uh, to think about is the footwear that you're in. And if you are somebody that tends to pronate, so that's rolling in of the feet, you're going to need a little bit more support. And there are ways to find out your foot type and the, the best type of footwear uh, for you, and we can do another video on that. Um, try to avoid things that are really flat. So you want some support, a little bit of lift. Um, there are lots of different trainers out there, motion control trainers, neutral trainers that you can put insoles and orthotics into as well. Um, but you want a good supportive shoe. And it will also depend on whether you plan to do like off-road walking, so through woods and forests and stuff, or if you're sticking to roads, that will also make a difference um, to how your foot functions and how the ankles adapt to it as well as the forces coming up through the leg and into the body and the foot there, footwear that you will need. So when you start to try, uh, when you try and get um, into the walking and you find that you're starting to get a few little niggles, it's quite common and it might be something that there's been uh, an issue with your foot or your calf or your Achilles for quite some time but it's never bothered you because you've never really asked any more of that muscular area. When you up the level of physical exercise and ask those muscles to do a lot more work then that's when little niggles will come into play. So we have to try and identify where it's coming from and obviously what we need to do. If you're somebody that has got an ongoing foot or ankle problem, um, obviously make sure that you're okay to do any of these exercises before you embark on them. Um, if you're struggling to find the right sort of person to help you, um, do go to a foot specialist, so go see a podiatrist. You wouldn't go to a doctor for your teeth, you'd go to a dentist because they're specialists in that area. And that's what podiatrists are, they're specialists in the lower leg. So the biomechanics of it, um, everything from the skin to the surgical procedures, so they're just purely specialists on that area. So if you want to, still struggling with um, being able to remedy a problem, then do go and see a podiatrist. So we're just going to start off um, just with some basic exercises today. There's a few bits of kit that I find really, really useful. And if you don't have these, there's loads of things that you can use instead around the house. So first of all, I've got a, this is a hard ball. So you can use a tennis ball, but it needs to be something that isn't going to compress when you put weight onto it. So these are great um, for a massaging under the foot. Um, so if you're somebody, somebody who's got uh, plantar fasciitis, which is quite a broad general term, um, and if you go to a doctor and you've got a foot complaint and they're not quite sure exactly of the precise nature of it, it's generally termed plantar fasciitis, but that can be so, so many different things. Um, so this is great. I have one of these by my bed, so in the morning, before I get up, um, I will just spend a couple of minutes just rolling my feet backwards and forwards on this ball. Um, you can also use a, a tin from the cupboard, like a tin of baked beans, that's also great. Also, um, the inside cardboard roll of a, a tin foil, yeah, a tin foil roll, that's really quite hard and solid. That's brilliant for rolling out your feet. Um, this is also really good if you don't have one of these, which is a foam roller, 
um, but you can use the two together, which also work quite well. So if you have got, uh, for example, a problem in the calf or the Achilles, and you need to really kind of release that muscle because uh, it's super, super tight, then this is brilliant to apply some body weight onto um, like your foam roller to work out any knots. The other thing that I like to use <coughs> is a block. Um, now, if you don't have one of these, you can stack up a couple of big chunky books um, or you can use a stair. So we'll be using these and basically you're going to stand on these and just lower the heels. So you've got a bit of a, a lift there. Um, you can use a stair, like I said, but just be careful, particularly with some carpet because it can be a little bit slippy. So a block or some books. And then the other thing um, is something like this or just a normal TheraBand. Um, so it's just a resistance band. Again, if you don't have one of these, a pair of uh, tights or leggings, just something that you don't mind to kind of be stretched, but they've got some, some give in them, some stretch in them, anything like that will also be quite helpful. Okay, so we're just gonna start off just with some uh, gentle warm-ups. So whenever you're stretching out the feet or the calves, the Achilles, you need to make sure that those muscles are warm. So perfect if you've just gone out for a walk. Um, so we're just gonna be warming them up and then going through some very basic stretches today. And then throughout the series of videos, we'll be looking at more specific areas and specific problems that you might have. Okay, so you're just going to need uh, something to balance on. So it can be a windowsill or a chair. And uh, you can do it in bare feet or socks. And just face the area and have your feet in parallel. And you're just going to do some little rises. So just rising up onto the balls of the feet and gently back down. So when you rise up, try and make sure that the ankles aren't falling out to the side. Yeah, you want to keep everything in a nice straight line and roll down through the heels. Just rock back a little bit and lift the toes and then try and fan the toes out as you place them back down onto the ground. So rising up and down. Rock back, fan the toes out. And again, so let's just do 10 of these. Rock back, fan the toes out. So you're really kind of extending those lesser digits, getting a good stretch underneath the foot to make sure we're stretching all of it. That's it, so nice and parallel. Again, make sure that the feet aren't too turned out here or turned in. Good, so just a few more. So the, you've got a calf uh, pump, so muscle pumping in your calf. Uh, and if you can get that going, that's a really brilliant way to get the circulation going and to warm yourself up. Good. So when you're injured, it's really easy. I'm going to carry on doing this as I talk, so you keep going. It's really easy to think, well, I need to just stop and rest. And for some things you do, um, but there's also other things that you could be doing to help um, and to start strengthening and working through the problem. Like I say, if you're unsure, um, do consult somebody who can give you more uh, specific advice. Make sure you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be doing. But don't always think that the answer is complete rest, because sometimes that can be worse than continuing through and just adapting your programme. Good, okay. So those are quite warm now. I feel that in my calf. So now we're just going to articulate through the foot. So still standing in parallel. And um, come forwards and drop the camera down slightly so you've got a better view. Okay, so just on my feet now rather than on my face. So from here, we're just going to be articulating through. So I just want you to come onto the ball of the foot. And again, just be mindful that this ankle isn't falling out to the side. Yep. And we're just going to change. So you want to come up as high as you can 
on that half toe so you're getting a nice stretch underneath the arch good so these are all very basic simple things that we're starting off with but still very key to keeping these areas functioning well good and you might find that you don't have that range of motion at the big toe joint and this can be for a lot of reasons including uh, the foot pronating and when the foot rolls in this big toe joint the first mtpj which just means metatarsal phalangeal joint um, is blocked yeah because there's too much pressure so you can't get as much lift when the foot is more of a, a neutral position you can see that that big toe joint will lift a lot more and flex a lot more okay and also you can do these in um, a pair of shoes as well if you're really uncomfortable kind of isolating the foot and working through the foot like this start off in a in a pair of shoes but it's giving you just a little bit more cushioning good okay all right and then we're just going to take our ball so your tennis ball um a hard ball a tin of baked beans your tin foil and we're just going to start rolling underneath again i'm going to carry on talking and lift you back up so you can see me rolling as we're talking here so with the muscles in the foot and the leg you've obviously got quite a few um, but you have to remember that there's muscles that insert from the back of the knee run all the way down the back of the calf and the Achilles and they go underneath the heel and continue underneath the foot and insert here okay so if you've got an issue in the calf belly or in the Achilles it's going to affect underneath the foot if you've got an issue in the foot underneath the toes or the arch or the heel that can also affect the calf and the Achilles all right so try to think of it as one uh, complete unit and um, one area will influence the other Good, so just really get it underneath the heel, turn that foot inwards a little bit and roll through on the arch, through the ball of the foot and then underneath those digits as well. Good. Okay. Alright, so after we've done this, we're just going to do some very basic stretches. Like I said, today is just a, an introduction into it and to give you a few things to be going on with before we focus on to more specialised areas, more specific areas. That also feels quite nice, just releases any kind of knots. And you can do this as much as you like, watching telly. Alright? Okay, so, um, some nice little stretches the calf and into the feet so again um, a wall or just something that you can lean against we probably know all of these so I'm just going to start off with some basic calf stretches first of all so just bend into one foot now try and make sure that both feet are perfectly parallel yeah particularly this back foot you'll find it has a tendency to want to turn out yeah so adjust that and just bend into the front knee and just sink that back heel down into the ground. So remember, we're just doing these stretches when we're warm. Yeah, so when you've done your walk or you've been busy running around and you feel quite hot in the legs anyway, then just have a go at a few of those rises and then before we go into the stretches. So remember, you'd never stretch when you're cold. So your muscles are like elastic bands and if it's cold much much easier for something to snap or pin 
Okay, so from here, you're just going to lift that back heel. So you've immediately got flexion now, bending that big toe joint. And then I want you to bend the back knee. So you're going to need to hold on to something. Bend the back knee. Now try and push the back heel down. And you straighten back leg and front leg and come to a flat back. Yep, if I come this way for you. Yep, come to a flat back. Now, if you've got tight hamstrings, yeah, which is quite possible, um, you can bend this front knee slightly, yeah, just a little micro bend so it's not too, too much of a pull. And then from here, just see if you can lift that front toe. Again, checking on your back foot, make sure that it's not turning out. Good. And then... The last one from here, with this back foot, you're going to curl the toes underneath you and then pull that foot through and just apply a little bit of pressure on that front foot. Again, watch the ankle that it's not going out to the side. So a little bit of pressure so you get a stretch on the front of the foot and the front of the shin. Okay, so just hold here. And then we would do the other side. So let's do the other side together. So bend into that other leg. Make sure you are doing the other leg. Check in on the back foot. Push that heel down. Try and make sure that your hips are square. And then we're going to lift that back heel. So you get a nice bend at the big toe joint. Bend the back knee. Push the back heel down. Straighten. Back leg, front leg, come to a flat back. And then again, bend the front knee if you need to. Lift the front toe. Good. And then we're going to drop the front toe and curl those toes underneath you. Pull forwards. Again, check. That the ankle isn't coming out to the side, just a little bit of pressure. If you get cramp, don't worry. Okay, it's basically just the muscles working in a way that maybe they haven't done for a long time. So it's quite normal. And it's just easy just to stretch it out the other way. Good, okay. Alright, so we've stretched a little bit into our calves. Again, there's lots more stretches that we will go on to do as the series continues. The one other thing that we're gonna do now is just use our foam roller and our ball. So, I'll just take you down a little bit. Good. So, try, if you don't have access to um, a foam roller, they are really, really useful to have, and you can buy them from Amazon, um, and you can obviously use them all over your body. Um, and try to then think of it as uh, part of a normal exercise regime. So rather than a nice to do, if you like, and adding on extra, it just becomes the norm, just becomes part of it. Okay, so with the ball, for example, if you had a, a real kind of knot in the belly of the calf or down at the Achilles, all we would do is just find that position, yep, place it underneath, and you want to get, it'll be, if you know, if it feels quite sore, it, you just need to breathe through it, but I promise you it does work. So you could start off gently, just kind of forwards and backwards, and rolling the area, and then you want to try and load the weight. So if I was to put my hands behind and just lift up, so I'm getting a lot more of my body weight through that calf. And then you could always hook the other leg over the top as well. Yeah, you'll find the sore spot. Stay there and breathe. I promise you it will ease. Keep breathing, try and relax. And when you feel it just easing off a fraction, then get a little bit of movement going forwards and backwards, side to side, circular. Yeah. And just keep keep on doing it. If you had uh, an injury where there was 
some inflammation still and it was quite hot to touch then that's difference and that's sometimes uh, if you've just done something if you've just injured yourself um, and an area is hot and swollen then that's obviously when you bring the ice pack out just to try and get this inflammation down and settle so you might have just a one day of just resting it and getting the heat out of it and the inflammation down before you start treating it um, so that's the ball again obviously it can be used all over the body that was just one example and then the foam roller nice and obvious as well so you can do both legs at the same time but again just try to think of this as part of the routine so you'd start off really gently then you'd start to load and again just hooking one foot over the other and gently backwards and forwards it's quite a good workout for your arms as well good okay and that will really really help um, and save you quite a lot of money in uh, not needing to go and see a therapist quite as frequently. So just to kind of recap for today's session, we've spoken about um, how the muscles interlink, so from the back of the knee all the way down, tucks underneath this heel and these uh, tendons will insert on the um, plantar surface or on the bottom surface underneath these toes. So if these are pulling, if these are tight, you might be somebody that has retracted digits as well, um, then they're, they're gonna need to be lengthened. Um, if you've got something going on here, that's it's all gonna work together. Um, one thing that we do need for normal walking you need a good 90 degrees plus an extra 10 of what we call dorsiflexion, which is when the foot is flexed. So if you were to sit with your legs stretched out, so that's, that's plantar flex, which is pointing, and this is what we call dorsiflex. So you need 90 degrees plus ideally an extra 10, yeah? So if that was to be pushed a little bit more, you get a bit more range of motion at that ankle. So that's basically, you need that because when we walk normally, you will land on the, the lateral side, so the outside of the heel, and then the shock absorbing motion is that pronation when you come from the outside of the heel to the inside of that big toe joint. That's your shock absorbing motion and then you roll off through that big toe joints and the lesser digits, okay? So if you, if you don't have that, if you don't have that amount of dorsiflexion here because the Achilles and the calves are tight for one, uh, one example, you will tend to spend a lot more time walking on the ball of your foot because you can't get the heel down first because you can't get the length here. And um, people who, um, habitually toe walk, it's a sort of further extreme, but people who are a little bit springy, a bit bouncy on their forefoot, they're working the calves and the Achilles even more, so they tend to tighten up even more, so they need even more sort of flexibility and length work. Okay, so get yourself a foam roller, or if not, just get yourself a really, really hard ball, um, any sort of niggles in the feet, Maybe when you get up first thing in the morning, just spend a little bit of time rolling out underneath the foot. Do it while you're watching telly. You can do it while you're cooking dinner or waiting for the kettle, any, any time that you get. Um, we will move on to the therabands and resistance work in the next session and also our block. So go out for your walk, make sure you've got suitable uh, supportive footwear on. When you come back when you're warm, just take that extra 10 minutes to come and do those little calf rises just to get the blood pumping nicely in the calf and then those stretches that we've just done and then if you can at the very end just get onto the foam roller and then next time we'll be talking a little bit more about specific areas other exercises strengthening and flexibility work that we can do for the lower leg and don't forget that if there's ever a, 
a pull in one direction of the muscle, um, it's going to transfer up the body. So an issue that is wrong with the foot can come all the way up, it can affect the knee, it can affect the hip, it can then affect the lower back and so on and upwards. So make sure our feet are happy and then we'll work up the body. Thanks very much folks and we'll see you again next time.